Drake's wife, Renee, ended up distracting R-Truth, and Drake got the pin, and so ensued the show long who was going to be wearing the 24-7 title by the end of the night. There was supposed to be a match between Drew McIntyre and Cedric Alexander, but Drew attacked Cedric on the outside and just totally annihilated Cedric Alexander. So they're going to try and set up Drew, I'm guessing, as a super strong uh, character going forward to SummerSlam, where he currently does not have an official match set yet. In the locker room, Drake Maverick ran into Boogeyman, got scared, fell on the floor, and Pat Patterson stomped him a couple times and became the oldest person in WWE history to win a championship as he took the 24-7 title. Back in the arena area, the Viking Warriors destroyed Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins and got a victory for them. Another backstage segment with the Legends had Maria looking for Mike Kanellis, and he was talking with Eve. Then Eric Bischoff got involved. He invited Maria and Mike over to SmackDown. Maria then was yelling at Mike again, and Ron Simmons was in there to do his damn moment. While not seen on screen, Pat Patterson was defeated by Gerald Briscoe to become the new 24-7 champion. While Briscoe was celebrating, he ended up getting low blowed by Kelly Kelly, who took the 24-7 championship, becoming the first female to hold that title. Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns had a confrontation, which turned into a match, and Samoa Joe lost to Roman Reigns. I think they're going to pick up something again this week on Raw, and maybe this will be the program again for these two for SummerSlam, because neither of them have a program going in. Seth Rollins was on Miz TV. He kind of made fun of Brock Lesnar, which I don't think got over too well. Paul Heyman came out and confronted Seth. Seth threatened to curb stomp Heyman and chased him out of the arena. And it was announced that Seth is going to go against AJ Styles in the main event. Candice, Michelle, Melina, and Naomi were talking backstage when Kelly Kelly approached them celebrating her 24-7 title, and it turned out Melina was now a referee, and Candice Michelle quickly pinned Kelly Kelly to become the champion, but then Medusa showed up, or Alundra Blaze showed up, and she choked out Candice Michelle to become the new 24-7 champion, but said she wasn't going to have it for too much longer. Rey Mysterio defeated Sami Zayn by pinfall. Sami tried to get out of there, and he was stopped by other legends, such as Rob Van Dam, Sergeant Slaughter, Hurricane, and Kurt Angle, who all came down to the ring to prevent Sami from leaving. And when he got back in the ring, Rey scored the uh, pinfall victory after 6-1-9. We see Medusa come out and have a garbage can and the 24-7 title, so they're playing off a shtick that happened over 20 plus years ago and before she could throw out the title this time Teddy DiBiase came out offered her some money for the belt and did what he couldn't do in 1988 he actually bought the title for himself in the AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins match AJ was accompanied by OC club uh, members Gallows and Anderson and they are representing sort of the original club uh, play on the Bullet Club. Gallows and Anderson tried to get involved. DX, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H came out to make the save. The match continued, but then Gallows and Anderson attacked Seth. And just as they were about to get some chairs, out came Road Dog with the Outsiders, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, plus X Pac. And they stood by Seth's side along with DX and they said they're, that Seth and Gallows and Anderson might be the OCs, but they're the OGs and referenced the fact that, you know, the click and DX, NWO, and even had Seth Rollins do the, if you're not down with that, we have two words for you, catchphrase. And that was how that ended. 
Ted DiBiase went to his limo to leave with the 24-7 championship, but Drake Maverick was inside. You heard a three count and came out holding the title. Uh, just as that ended, we actually did see our truth come and roll up Drake Maverick, and he's the champion. As they jumped into the limousine, Renee was in there. I'm not sure where DiBiase went. I think this actually was another segment. And the limousine took off with Renee, R-Truth, and the 24-7 championship. Carmella and Drake were left in the laneway. And Drake realized that his baby was gone. And his wife. Mick Foley came out to make a speech. He acknowledged one of his favorite moments being the night that he won his first WWE championship. And the lights went out and flickered and some sounds. Next thing you know, Bray Wyatt, as the Fiend, attacked McFoley and used even the mandible claw on him to take him out. It's probably one of the most effective segments of the night using a legend with a current star. One can only hope that maybe Bray is picking up the mandible claw from Mick as sort of a passing of the torch as a new move other than Sister Abigail. There was a moment of Bliss segment with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. They brought out Becky Lynch, and before things could get too far, Natalia came out, and there was a verbal confrontation, which turned into a physical one between Natalia and Becky, as they'll be going after each other at SummerSlam for the Raw Women's Championship. Braun Strowman had a very short match against a local guy named Randy Rowe, and yeah, it was just... A decimation of somebody uh, to prove that Braun was still around and dominant. Uh, the final segment had all the legends come out. Ric Flair came out just to music. He didn't say anything. Then Hogan came out. He made a big speech. And after that happened, Steve Austin came out and went directly to the ring. He toasted the fans, called everybody family. So it's almost as though they were dropping the WWE Universe name to be WWE Family. And they want to acknowledge that people, once you love WWE, you are part of the family. Don't Family doesn't leave each other. And he did a big bear bash, which then the other uh, legends came down to drink with him. He wondered about a countdown, had a story about Gerald Briscoe and doing some illegal stuff uh, in another country. Uh, apparently Scott Hall wasn't in the ring because there was a lot of beer going on and he's on a med that would make him sick if he was anywhere near the beer. But uh, yeah, the show ended with a toast and beer bash. A decent episode. I'm not sure how much of it it actually advanced to, uh, towards SummerSlam with the exception of a little bit of verbiage between uh, Seth and Paul Heyman plus the brawl between Becky and Natalia, and hopefully there was a passing of the torch, as I said, with Bray Wyatt. That moves us on to SmackDown, where it was actually Eric Bischoff's first night on the job. There was a confrontation with Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. McMahon ended up making a Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns match, and then inserted himself as a special guest uh, announcer. Drew was the ring referee, should I say, and uh, Elias as the timekeeper. During that segment, they also set up the Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon match for SummerSlam. If Owens loses, he has to quit WD because they showed footage of him quitting months ago uh, before he ended up going for his knee surgery. Of course, the Owens and Reigns match ended in, in no contest because Shane got involved, Elias, and so did Drew. And in the end, Shane got a couple stunners for his efforts from Kevin Owens. Kofi Kingston uh, came out to say who he felt he would defend the WWE Championship against. Of course, that was provided he retained it at Smackville when he was going to be in a triple threat match. More on that in a bit. But he chose Randy Orton. They brought up everything that happened 11 years ago when 
Kofi almost had a big push there against Randy Orton and how it came to a stop. And Randy took credit for stopping that. But these two are set to go against each other at SummerSlam. Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe ended in a disqualification because Randy Orton got involved attempting to hit an RKO on Kofi, but he missed that. He ended up uh, hitting an RKO on Samoa Joe, but Kofi ended up standing tall after a trouble in paradise on Randy Orton. Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Apollo Crews. Mandy Rose told Sonya Deville that she has secured them a match against the Iconics, and if they win, they get a title match for the uh, women's tag team titles. Dolph Ziggler crashed uh, Miz TV, who he had Shawn Michaels on, and by the end of it, Dolph ended up super kicking Shawn after Shawn had insulted uh, Dolph for everything that's going on. With a distraction, Amber Moon ended up defeating Charlotte Flair. Uh, the distraction came from Bailey, but then Amber pushed Bailey into the ring, and a little bit of a fight happened between the three ladies. A couple of uh, eclipses were hit. Later on, Charlotte Flair was backstage, and she ended up saying that the fact that she's not on the card and not in title contention, she has a plan to become known with the fact that she's going to be the greatest of all time. There's heavy rumors that she's going to be going against Trish Stratus at SummerSlam, and that could come to fruition as Trish is scheduled to be on SmackDown in a special King's Court segment with Jerry the King Lawler. Finn Balor was in the ring, and it was talked about what happened to him with the attack by the Fiend a couple weeks ago. There was then a special Firefly Funhouse on the big screen, and Bray accepted the challenge from Finn Balor on behalf of the Fiend, so they will battle each other at SummerSlam as well. And that was WD TV for this week. I'll be back in just a moment to review what happened quickly as results of Smackville and look forward to NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam. The one and only Tim Curry will be a featured guest at London Comic Con presented by Start.ca October 5th and 6th, 2019, the London Convention Center. Last night, WD held a special event on the WD Network. It was a one-hour special called Smackville from Nashville, Tennessee. There was a bunch of dark matches, obviously, because it was a house show, plus the special on the network. In the dark matches, New Day retained the tag team titles over the B team. Alistair Black defeated Andrade. Heavy Machinery beat AOP. The Iconics retained their women's tag team titles over the Kabuki Warriors. And Sami Zayn beat Apollo Crews. On the TV special, Shinsuke Nakamura retained the IC title against Ali. Kevin Owens beat Elias. And Kofi Kingston retained the WWE Championship in a triple threat match over Dolph Ziggler and Samoa Joe. The next time there's a special on the WWE Network, it'll be for NXT TakeOver Toronto. There's four matches scheduled so far. A fifth one will most likely be added, as most TakeOver specials have five matches on them. But the four titles are on the line, with Shayna Baszler defending the NXT Women's Championship against Mia Yim. Velveteen Dream will defend the North American Championship in a triple threat match against Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne. The Street Profits are set to go against the Undisputed Era for the NXT Tag Team titles, and Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano will face off yet again in a 203 falls match. William Regal has told them that they will each pick a stipulation for the first and second falls. If a third fall is needed, William Regal will step in and declare what the third stipulation is. So that happens on September 10th at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, part of SummerSlam weekend. Bringing us to SummerSlam, where currently we do know that Finn Balor will take on Bray Wyatt as the Fiend. Kevin Owens will go against Shane McMahon 
and if Owens loses, he must quit WWE 